Now we would like to begin the special session of Tokyo Global Dialogue, the uh, maritime and security around Japan. Um, uh, my name is uh, uh, Kotani, a uh, moderator for this session with uh, JIA. Uh, if you look around the security environment uh, around Japan, the uh, tension around the Taiwan Strait is increasing. In uh, August uh, 22, the uh, former uh, Speaker of the House of the United States, Pelosi, visited there, and uh, in countering that, uh, the uh, China uh, conducted drills. Uh, and uh, in emergencies, including the air, the uh, uh, sea blockade uh, might be a possibility. That was shown. And here, the uh, ballistic missile uh, to the uh, um, uh, the areas uh, not far from the uh, Japanese territorial water, uh, the uh, uh, missiles were uh, launched, and uh, also the uh, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, provocation is increasing, and also the uh, China and Russia are uh, conducting joint uh, exercises and uh, cruises around uh, Japan. So uh, there is a closer co cooperation between uh, China and Russia. And Japan came up with the uh, uh, policies uh, to strengthen the uh, capabilities for defense. And uh, around these issues, we'd like to have a discussion in this session. Now, today, we have uh, three panelists from Japan, Taiwan, and the United States. Uh, now, including uh, the uh, introduction first, uh, I would like to ask uh, each person the same question first. Uh, to uh, the how do they affect the uh, uh, cross uh, strait uh, relations? And uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, peace, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, three uh, defense security uh, documents. How uh, what sort of a change would that bring about? In addition, Russia is invading. Uh, 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 Ukraine and uh, uh, the uh, tomorrow. Oh, well, uh, the today of uh, Ukraine is said to be the tomorrow of uh, uh, Asia, and uh, how uh, concerned should we uh, be, and uh, how the three countries should respond to this situation? I would like to ask uh, uh, the, each of the three panelists uh, these questions. We have uh, Lisa Curtis from the United States, uh, Director, Indo-Pacific uh, Security, uh, CNAS, uh, the Center for a New American Security. So, Ms. Curtis, could you answer uh, those questions first? Well, thank you very much, and it certainly... Thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure to be here today. Uh, thank you for the invitation um, and for those questions. And uh, I think you asked about uh, Japan's uh, security documents and what they say about uh, what's happening in the Taiwan Strait and about maritime security. Um, and certainly Japan as a maritime nation uh, depends on free and open seaways. It depends on uh, seaways that are free from piracy, that are unimpeded by aggressive actions of other nations. Um, and in the documents in both the national security strategy and the national defense strategy, uh, Japan very much commits to strengthening uh, joint deterrence and to trying to shape a security environment that does not tolerate unilateral changes to territorial status quo. Um, and I think uh, the documents are very clear about uh, how Japan is viewing uh, the military activities that are taking place in the Taiwan Strait. Um, and of course, uh, as you mentioned, the NDS highlights the fact that uh, five ballistic missiles landed in uh, Japan's waters during the live fire exercises uh, that China conducted in the Taiwan Strait uh, in August. And so I think this really brought home uh, to Japan that what happens in the Taiwan Strait has a direct impact on Japan's own uh, national security uh, interest. Uh, with regard to uh, Russia's relationship with China, I think we've discussed that quite a bit in this conference, the fact that the No Limits Partnership was signed between China and Russia uh, just three weeks before Russia's invasion of Ukraine has very much alarmed many nations, uh, including Japan. 
uh, and really motivated, I think, these uh, the national security documents that we saw coming out of Japan in December. Um, uh, I think it's it's notable, uh, as you also mentioned, um, uh, Kotani-san, in your opening comments, that uh, Russia is also accelerating its military activities near Japan um, and strengthening its uh, cooperation with China in terms of conducting joint exercises, joint navigation of naval vessels, uh, even joint bomber flights uh, near Japan. Um, so for all these reasons, I think the national security documents of Japan have rightly emphasized uh, the need to improve maritime security and uh, have very much committed Japan to um, doing more things that would protect maritime security, things like overseas port calls, uh, more surveillance, more exercises with other countries, um, uh, working on more agreements with, with other countries like recipro reciprocal access agreements. Um, I think all of these things are important and um, we can see that, uh, you know, very much responding to the provocative military exercises that China conducted in the Taiwan Strait last August. Thank you very much. The same question to the next person. That is, uh, we would like to hear from Dr. Lai from the Prospect Foundation. Dr. Lai, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Konani-san, and uh, thanks for having me in this very important panel. Uh, I think the uh, Taiwan Strait uh, crisis or the uh, military tension definitely is rising, and uh, um, not just uh, uh, last year, the August, and after Nancy, uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi visit to Taiwan, but also after the Chinese Congress, uh, 20th National uh, CCP Congress, uh, the, its military action against Taiwan continues to rise, especially the violation of mainland of Taiwan Straits, the location, and also the uh, distance uh, is much closer to Taiwan with a much bigger frequency as well as a much bigger scale. And so that we are looking at the, uh, the major uh, uptick in terms of the Chinese act, uh, military activities. And it's not just about the air for, uh, in the air, but also uh, they constantly right now station about four to five ve uh, sea vessels just outside of the 24 not having a mouse and outside Taiwan. And so that cons consists a major um, security concern uh, for Taiwan. And also, the, in terms of the, uh, how the development of the Russians' war on Ukraine, uh, what uh, Taiwan discovered uh, was that the uh, Russia started to ally itself uh, also uh, much closer to China uh, as uh, what the people witness about Chinese position to, uh, moving closer to Russia in terms of how uh, China the view the NATO and the, the cause of the war uh, on Russia, uh, by Russia to Ukraine. And China shares the, what Russia's accusations about how the NATO and the United States caused the war. And uh, Russia had also shared with Chinese uh, positions about the, uh, the opposition to the Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, the opposition to the FOIP. And uh, just the last year, Russia publicly endorsed Chinese position that Taiwan is the inalienable part of the PRC. And so was the uh, North Korea. For both countries, of course, uh, they, uh, that's their long-standing positions but uh, they haven't been able to spell out uh, that publicly until last year. So that was also a major political uptick in terms of the Chinese position shared by Russia and North Korea. So just like Japan uh, suddenly find itself, and after the war in Ukraine, Japan faces the, the threat from China, North Korea, and now adding Russia. And Taiwan also find it that uh, in addition to China, the uh, Russia and the North Korea could also play, uh, might play a certain role should China decide to attack Taiwan. 
and so that the activity by Russia and also the North Korea's certain actions, as well as uh, the preparation for the future contingency should China really attack Taiwan, what Russia and the North Korea could, could do, that's um, another serious of concern. And I think uh, that uh, uh, aspect also brings about the um, uh, how we should look at the East Asian uh, possible contingency theaters. We should not and cannot uh, treat the contingency in areas such as Senkaku, an island area, uh, East China Sea, Taiwan Strait, South China Sea, uh, and even uh, the Korean Peninsula as four distinct uh, different theaters and uh, treat them differently. We have to integrate all of them because we believe uh, probably in the future, should uh, these uh, contingencies in one area could actually quickly expand to contingencies in other area. So those are the major lessons that we take. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, uh, next uh, from Japan, the former uh, admiral, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Takei, a admiral, I would like to ask him the same question. Please, Admiral Takei. Now, for myself, uh, first, uh, the, uh, how uh, the, uh, I would like to uh, well, uh, uh, talk about the uh, three strategic domains. The significance of this is uh, it uh, positions China as the greatest strategic challenge that has, been, uh, ever, that has ever been faced. Needless to say, uh, well, uh, the, the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, security strategy it says China has a uh, uh, pacing challenge. Uh, now, with respect to the national security strategy, uh, well, uh, the uh, Japan uh, is now at an uh, inflection point uh, to be in a, a world of uh, hope or a world of uh, difficulty and distrust, which is the most difficult in the uh, post-war world. And this understanding is uh, shared with the United States. And uh, the uh, Prime Minister Kishida uh, says repeatedly that uh, they conducted a, a very a realistic simulation to uh, formulate the uh, national security strategy. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, purpose is to uh, pivot toward the threat opposing uh, defense capabilities, uh, uh, adding uh, the political rationality to uh, uh, militaristic uh, rationality. And, uh, and also, uh, the, uh, it, uh, the document describes that uh, it's going to uh, well drastically strengthen the uh, defense capability, focusing on the way the opponent uh, will fight. And uh, now, uh, in uh, the, uh, the uh, it says uh, uh, it will uh, maintain the working relationship on a non-government basis uh, with uh, the uh, uh, Taiwan but uh, also uh, <clears throat> it will continue to uh, maintain a variety of efforts to, uh, in hoping for the uh, peaceful resolution of the cross-strait issues. And this uh, indicates the Japanese uh, government's very strong intention uh, to, uh, uh, or commitment to peace and stability of the uh, cross-strait. And the Japan intends to uh, increase the uh, defense spending to 2% of GDP so that uh, uh, it can uh, seamlessly uh, defense, uh, defend uh, uh, Japan by 2027. 2027 is a year where the, uh, there's going to be a manifestation of uh, uh, Taiwan cro uh, cross-strait uh, uh, crisis. And so this uh, is indicative of the uh, intention of uh, the uh, Prime Minister Kishida's um, intention. And uh, now about uh, the... Uh, well, uh, the, uh, how sh concerned should we be with respect to the uh, Sino-Russian uh, strategic uh, coordination? Now, um, the uh, 
both uh, NSS and DS uh, believes that uh, the uh, strategic uh, relationship between the two countries is a challenge to international uh, order. Uh, although there is a, a partnership, uh, the purpose may be different uh, because uh, for Russia, the, the, uh, they would like to see uh, the uh, uh, well, uh, America's diversion uh, from uh, Europe. And for China, uh, the Japan and the United States uh, uh, have a heightened interest in the uh, uh, cross-trade relations. So they would like to check that. And also, uh, China would like to check the, uh, uh, well, uh, vis uh, the China uh, policy. And so the two countries have uh, different purposes, particularly with Russia, after the um, uh, invasion of uh, uh, Ukraine, there uh, has been a heightened uh, well, uh, deployment of uh, strategic uh, bombers. So the European face and uh, Asian uh, front are uh, coordinated, so they don't, can't take uh, two front uh, operations. Given this, uh, the Russia uh, is uh, focusing their attention on the European front, so they don't want, uh, they will not uh, change the circle in the Far East. So given this, what can we do? When we consider this issue, there are three points. One, we should uh, maintain uh, well uh, diplomatic engagement with China and Russia, and uh, uh, we should uh, uh, maintain a necessary uh, contact in order to avoid uh, unexpected contingencies or unnecessary tensions. Number two, we should uh, uh, securely monitor uh, the uh, militarist activities of Russia and uh, China uh, in order to uh, in preparation for contingencies. Three, we should strengthen information sharing with our friends and allies to fill the uh, geographical gap of information. And with a higher uh, information and sharing, we should uh, heighten the transparency of activities of uh, China and Russia so that we can have a leeway in response. At, uh, in, uh, the uh, countries uh, uh, in this region, uh, well, uh, we have to maintain a high uh, coordination. Thank you very much. We have listened to three panelists with the focus on the current status in the Taiwan Strait, which seems dire. And Japan announced uh, three security-related uh, 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 documents, including NSS and NDS. So I have a follow-up questions to the three panelists. One. You, the relationship between U.S. and uh, Taiwan, there's a, a Taiwan Relation Act, uh, provision of the weapons, uh, uh, the collaboration among uh, military forces, or uh, drills. So that's the security cooperation between these two countries, which is advancing. Whereas between Japan and Taiwan, the active uh, military forces uh, 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 interaction is limited. So, uh, so far, the security cooperation between Japan and Taiwan has not been quite active. But if we look at the current situation of the Taiwan Strait, I think the cooperation between Japan and Taiwan should be promoted. So I would like to ask uh, Professor Takei, from your viewpoint, uh, what do you uh, uh, see, what is missing in uh, the Japan and Taiwan uh, relations? And the same question to uh, Lai Sun. What kind of uh, security cooperation uh, would you like to see with Japan? And I have a question to Lisa Curtis. Well, U.S. and Taiwan uh, proceeded with the security cooperation so far, but going forward, with the uh, announcement of the three documents, what would kind of uh, Japan-Taiwan security cooperation would you like to see? I talked about uh, uh, the importance of the uh, uh, importance of uh, uh, the uh, information sharing among allies to deter uh, China and Russia. But uh, there is a geographic gap in terms of information. Uh, information sharing with Taiwan needs to be happened. Uh, now, between Japan and the U.S., a variety of channels are used for uh, sharing information. But uh, with uh, Taiwan, uh, the relationship with the country is only uh, at the working level. There is not much sufficient. Uh, 
um, uh, information sharing. I talked about uh, the national security strategy in connection with the uh, relationship with Taiwan. Uh, it says uh, uh, the center uh, it centers around uh, the uh, working relationship with Taiwan. But as you know, um, uh, it has changed in uh, coordination uh, with uh, uh, the global relationship. It has expanded in the maritime relationship as well. For example, the, uh, the, there's a, a coastal uh, guard in Taiwan, and uh, uh, where uh, there is a liaison uh, contact point for the maritime um, well, uh, search and rescue. And uh, uh, well, the, if there is a uh, maritime accident, uh, for uh, uh, this is uh, to exchange information uh, for uh, well, uh, accidents, and uh, this is based on the uh, uh, well, MOU of uh, December 2017. But uh, there is no hotline, there is no uh, military uh, contact point, and uh, so the contingency it might happen uh, not with uh, uh, China only, but uh, Taiwan as well. So the, um, the uh, uh, maybe it is not likely that a strategic uh, uh, partnership between Russia and China uh, will not uh, impact uh, uh, Taiwan, but uh, as uh, can be evidenced by uh, Russia, an unforeseen uh, contingency might uh, happen. So we should establish a liaison mechanism uh, between uh, Japan and China uh, as well. Uh, so the, so real-time uh, information sharing uh, should uh, be co uh, created, happen. There's no color in information. How to use it, information uh, is uh, at the discretion of countries. So information uh, sharing uh, should be able to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lai Chung, please. Yeah, thank you. I think the, I just share uh, with Maro uh, uh, Takei uh, his concern about the uh, the need for the information sharing intelligence as well uh, between Japan and Taiwan. But I think that uh, uh, those are the obvious need. Uh, but what really is lack of is that the uh, first of all um, in the U.S.-Japan uh, within the U.S.-Japan alliances about the uh, the uh, Taiwan contingency uh, the planning itself. And second, how to integrate Taiwan, especially in terms of the uh, when we talk about, when they talk about Taiwan and have Taiwanese people the perspective and the input into the whole process, uh, and also improve the uh, strategic level of the communication between Taiwan and the U.S.-Japan alliances, uh, because we believe that uh, whatever will happen in the Taiwan Strait and the Japan probably will uh, participate uh, should. Uh, it decided to participate in uh, to help the defense of Taiwan uh, will be through the U.S.-Japan alliance system. So that uh, we need to discuss uh, first within the U.S.-Japan alliance system, and then the Taiwan-Japan security cooperation, all kind of mechanism that could follow through because of that. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, right now we haven't been able to talk about uh, this process. Uh, that pro that could be the, uh, the the starting point for a lot of other things. And also, I share with the Takei uh, Merle his uh, suggestion regarding the, the in terms of peacetime, uh, the Coast Guard cooperation. But I would just like to stress that uh, the uh, the peacetime cooperation and the uh, wartime cooperation, uh, those are. Uh, uh, we have uh, two distinct characters about them. So that uh, the expectation that how the peace and cooperation could uh, gradually uh, um, uh, move up to the uh, wartime, sometimes we have to be aware of the uh, institutional constraints about those. Um, and I just hope that uh, this could be uh, uh, con uh, uh, to be able to conquer it. And finally, I would say that the uh, the current mechanism uh, in Japan office and also Taiwan office in Japan in terms of how the um, uh, liaison uh, that could to, that could be established. I also second this idea, and I just wish that uh, the liaison officers uh, from the Japan to Taiwan that could be sent as fast as possible, and then with the relevant authority uh, in terms of how to uh, transmit the data as well as the analysis and also the orders uh, that could also, that could be able to facilitate the communication between Taiwan and Japan and of course also with the United States thank you
Thank you. This is a really interesting uh, question about uh, increased Japan-Taiwan cooperation. And I think we can certainly see uh, through the uh, new national security documents that Japan is already thinking in these terms uh, because of what's been happening over the last uh, few years, and in particular, the uh, provocative uh, Chinese military exercises in the Taiwan Strait um, uh, last August. Uh, but I think we can see that uh, the, the first time that uh, Japan had mentioned Taiwan in a joint statement with the United States was actually about two years ago uh, under the former Prime Minister Suga. Uh, so that was sort of a, a first step, I think, uh, for, for Japan and thinking about its relationship with uh, Taiwan. Um, and you know we've heard about the importance of information sharing, um, and also uh, it was mentioned about planning. And I would really emphasize that this is an important um, aspect of the cooperation uh, that's necessary. Um, and this can also involve the U.S. So that you have um, Japan, U.S., Taiwan uh, trilateral dialogues looking at contingency planning, um, what uh, can be done to prevent uh, a military blockade of Taiwan, which is something we're all concerned about. Um, so I think, yeah, the, these would be the most important things. In, in addition to thinking about uh, joint military exercises, um, training, um, these kinds of uh, cooperation uh, between Japan and Taiwan, I think, would be very welcome from the U.S. Uh, perspective. And then lastly, uh, looking at um, more statements. Um, as I mentioned, we can already see some forward-leaning statements from Japan in the national security documents talking about the importance of territorial sovereignty, not allowing unilateral changes uh, to territory. Um, I think this is very much with an eye toward Taiwan. But building on that and seeing more uh, public statements uh, recognizing uh, the importance of, of um, not allowing uh, Taiwan to uh, be subject to military coercion or military intimidation. Um, and even uh, eventually, if we can see uh, the issue of Taiwan included in Quad statements, um, I think this, this may be a heavy lift with a country like India uh, in particular, um, but I think it would be very important. Uh, I, we saw very strong statements um, uh, regarding Taiwan from the trilateral uh, defense ministerial uh, involving U.S., Australia, and Japan. Uh, but perhaps in the future, we can start to see uh, some of these statements uh, coming out of the quad as well. Thank you very much. And uh, another uh, additional question that I would like to ask you. And... Uh, well, Dr. Lai was saying about the Korean Peninsula, and that is uh, related to the Taiwan contingency. And uh, if a Taiwan contingency, of course, it's also possible that uh, that could spread to the Korean Peninsula, and I think now experts are talking about that. On the other hand, last year, uh, the UN administration came into being, and uh, they are uh, taking a different position from before, and they have an uh, Indo-Pacific strategy announced. And with regards to the relationship with China, it seems that uh, it is different, and it is a very realistic uh, way of thinking. And uh, I, I believe that uh, U.S.-Japan are okay. Uh, cooperation is to be promoted. So I would like to ask uh, Dr. Lai, that is, uh, from the perspective of Taiwan, the peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits. What kind of role can Korea play, and what kind of relationship uh, does Taiwan want to have with the Republic of Korea? And also, uh, Professor Takei and uh, Ms. Curtis, and uh, from the U.S.-Japan alliance perspective, 
uh, well, uh, ROK is starting to take a very uh, pragmatic uh, kind of position. And uh, in the past, the uh, discussion was about what to do about the DPRK. But uh, in the context of Japan, US, and uh, ROK, uh, if we think about Indo-Pacific and Taiwan Strait issues, what is it that should be done? So if you could respond to these questions. And first of all, if we could ask Dr. Lai, please. Yeah, thank you. That's a very interesting question. And uh, the uh, the connection between Taiwan Strait and the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula, uh, that has always been existent, uh, whether that's in 1950s, the uh, war on Ukraine, uh, actually uh, changed the U.S. policy toward Taiwan, and also the year 2003, uh, just uh, in the, uh, at the height of the anti-terrorism campaign, how China utilizes or uh, through the United States of, uh, uh, outsourcing its diplomacy to China on the North Korean issues that gave the Chinese the leverage about the position on Taiwan. So that in Taiwan, I think the strategic community always uh, is very concerned about uh, the uh, connection between Korea, uh, Korea Peninsula, and Taiwan, and uh, what might be uh, in the negative consequences toward Taiwan. But I think right now that the, the uh, Republic of Korea uh, issue an uh, Indo-Pacific strategy and basically also the strategic directions uh, it adopted uh, is in the process of improving the US, Japan, and ROK, the trilateral cooperation, which in our view is a very positive because we believe of we'll, uh, foster a greater uh, coordination and cooperation uh, uh, for the uh, first island chain, especially in the uh, Northeast Asia, and that could be the foundation uh, for the general security and stability in this area. Although we understand that ROK for various reasons uh, tend not to uh, speak out loud uh, regarding Taiwan, uh, but the ROK also, even during the uh, Moon Jae-un's government, also came on board uh, in a summit meeting uh, regarding a talk about the uh, uh, emphasis about the security and stability across the Taiwan Straits. So the, also to us, that uh, that is something that we take that uh, to heart and uh, uh, thank him for that. The issue about how the uh, Taiwan expects uh, the ROK to play uh, in the uh, uh, issue of the uh, Taiwan Strait contingency. I would say that, first of all, the uh, ROK needs to take care of the uh, security in the Korean Peninsula. And there's a possibility that North Korea might want to do something to distract the, both Japan and the uh, United States should China uh, launch the attack against Taiwan uh, to uh, distract the, both uh, Japan and the United States from uh, assisting Taiwan uh, through the North Korea. And so that uh, the first, uh, first order of thing definitely is to prevent that possibility, or at least to degrade that possibility from happening. And second is that the uh, China, when it talks about the uh, the military action on Taiwan, uh, the military theater uh, we believe will be from the uh, Eastern Theater Command, and with some assistance from Southern Theater Command. But uh, we do believe that the, the central uh, CMC and all the uh, uh, the uh, geo uh, important decision uh, still will be made uh, back in Beijing, in which that many of the information coming from there, uh, in which the um, uh, the Korean Peninsula is a very close proximity that can provide the ample, uh, the possible the, uh, tool and the means for the information uh, to probe about what is happening there. And the third, I will say that uh, the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula uh, and also the Japan, uh, United States, I hope that uh, the, uh, we could extend it finally to incorporate also the Philippines uh, in this uh, uh, development. Uh, as the Takei uh, Emerald, she just said about the importance of the information sharing. In this, the Nancy Pelosi's visit and the Chinese exercise on Taiwan episode, we actually find out that uh, there's a discrepancy in terms of Japan and Taiwan talk about the number of the missiles that China fire. Uh, and uh, the, uh, that basically demonstrates that the, um, uh, the information itself uh, is such an important issue uh, to get everyone together. But I also say that uh, the uh, facing the possible uh, involvement of Southern Theater Command, and also the Chinese heavy, heavy emphasis in the Bashi Channel, in which the, uh, some of the Chinese military activity could also endanger Japan. I think the uh, Philippines involvement and the integrate Philippines into the mixture uh, will also be very important. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Elm Takei, please. Uh, Japan, US, uh, uh, ROK, how that affects uh, Taiwan? Uh, in North, uh, the uh, Korean Peninsula, if there's a contingency in the uh, Korean Peninsula, ROK uh, would have to uh, dedicate itself to that. Uh, if there is a contingency in Taiwan Strait, North Korea, uh, if they uh, begin some operations now in preparation for that, ROK, uh, well, I think uh, there can be only limited support to Taiwan from ROK. Between, uh, well, ROK and uh, North Korea, there may be a big gap in terms of military, but uh, with just uh, military uh, op operations, but uh, the refugees from the war, uh, refugees from uh, North Korea might have to be dealt with by ROK. Given this, even if uh, North Korea might uh, uh, act in one way or another, uh, ROK uh, has to just focus on that. So to repeat, the, uh, uh, I don't think uh, there is no military leeway go to go to uh, Taiwan Strait. So what can be done when you consider this? The only thing in addition to information sharing, there is another uh, possible avenue for cooperation, and that is Japan and Taiwan and uh, ROK. They are all uh, well, uh, dependent on uh, uh, import of energy from overseas. So from gray zone to uh, co war contingencies, uh, stable uh, import of uh, energy is one area where there can be cooperation. That must happen, actually. And uh, the crisis in Taiwan uh, Strait with the uh, uh, Ukrainian war is a uh, prolongation, then this need would be heightened. Uh, all these uh, countries, there's only a uh, uh, limited uh, a natural gas uh, stockpile. So Australia or Southeast Asia or Middle East, uh, they have to be, uh, they have to cooperate to secure uh, import. And so regarding the safety of uh, our maritime, uh, well, sea lanes, there has to be a cooperation. As uh, Dr. Lai said earlier, Philippines and Malaysia and also Australia, they have to cooperate to uh, secure safety of the uh, maritime uh, traffic. So that has to be uh, done. And here, this region, uh, in the, if there is a crisis in Taiwan Strait, uh, China's A2AD curtain, uh, the Taiwan Strait would, would be within that curtain. And uh, China has a very strong Navy power. And uh, the, uh, from uh, Strait, uh, uh, well, the, uh, the cooperation among the navies would also be important. So from the stage of uh, gray zone, in preparation for the uh, contingency, how to maintain the uh, sea lanes is something that we need, uh, need to consider uh, right uh, now. Uh, toward 2027, if there is a, cr a heightening crisis, unless we start this, it would be too late. Uh, uh, but uh, there can be nothing uh, that can be done if you do it, uh, try to do it immediately. So uh, from gray zone, uh, in order to avoid a contingency happening, we have to uh, have discussion about what can be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Curtis, please. Thank you. Yes, I think with the new Yoon government, there are tremendous opportunities uh, for uh, both uh, Japan and uh, Korea to work together, but also uh, just in the overall outlook of the Yoon administration, which um, has, has coined its uh, foreign policy outlook uh, to be a global p uh, pivotal state, or GPS, uh, meaning that they are looking beyond just the Korean Peninsula in terms of their foreign policy. And we very much saw that with the release of the Indo-Pacific strategy um, a few months ago uh, from Korea. Uh, so this presents um, really unique uh, and positive opportunities for uh, the trilateral dialogue between the US, Japan, and Korea. Now, of course, the immediate focus will be on uh, the dangerous uh, activities that we see the DPRK government engaging in. These are the missile tests. We even just saw ballistic missile tests on Saturday. So that, that will be the immediate concern, I think, for the trilateral US, ROK, Japan trilateral talks. Um, but uh, moving forward, I think you know there will be opportunities to talk about 
the broader Indo-Pacific, for example. Um, things like technology cooperation. Um, Japan and Korea being, you know, technology leaders, there's um, a lot that can be done uh, in terms of semiconductors, for one, uh, we've already seen the establishment of the, the so-called Fabulous Four, the U.S., Taiwan, uh, Japan, Korea discussions um, on semiconductors. That can be taken forward. Um, and, and yes, the, the issue of the security situation in the Taiwan Strait uh, is something else that, that can be taken forward uh, between the uh, the three countries U.S. Um, ROK and Japan uh, moving forward and and just to to pick up on um, one of the other speakers' uh, comments on the Philippines and the important role uh, that they play as well when talking about security in the Taiwan Strait. Um, the U.S. has made a lot of progress in its relationship with the Philippines. Over the last several months, there's been a flurry of activi activity uh, between our two countries, the bilateral uh, security dialogue that took place in January, um, a recent visit by Secretary Austin to the Philippines in which the two sides decided to um, uh, increase the number of bases that the U.S. would have access to, uh, actually doubling those from uh, five to ten bases, which is uh, certainly important uh, for uh, the U.S. and um, any potential contingencies uh, in the Taiwan Strait. Um, so I think this is part of what we would call networked deterrence. Um, all of these countries working together, uh, U.S., Japan, Korea, Philippines, um, and, and, you know, looking toward keeping a stable and secure Taiwan Strait. Um, all of these countries have a role to play, and there's a, a great need for um, continued discussions and deeper discussions about planning uh, for any uh, c potential contingencies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Uh, I have another question to all the panelists, but before that, well, of course, we'll have a, 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 a Q&A session at the end. Please use Zoom function to send in your questions. I have a question to Ms. Curtis about the role of India. India has a very deep economic ties with Taiwan, but in the so far, uh, India has not referred to uh, the importance of the peace and uh, uh, stability in the Taiwan Strait so far. But if we look at Quad or its relation with the East Asia, maritime security, uh, Taiwan Strait uh, contingency, the, India cannot ignore this, especially on the Taiwan Strait issue. What is the position of India? What kind of role is it willing to oh, play or willing not to play? Next uh, to Mr. Lai and uh, Mr. Takei, in SCS and uh, the ECS, uh, there are gray zone activities uh, by China. And this, through this challenge of gray zone activities, uh, there is a threat on the sovereignty in the countries there, Japan, Taiwan, and uh, U.S. What kind of uh, cooperation should we form or advance in order to cope with that? Ms. Curtis first. Thank you. Uh, yes, you're right that India has been reticent to speak up too much about uh, Taiwan. And I think that's because of India's concern about its uh, border disputes with China and what's been happening recently in terms of uh, increased intrusions and border clashes uh, between India and China. Um, however, I think that is beginning to change. I think we have seen India more willing to engage uh, directly with Taiwan, increase economic cooperation. Um, Taiwan is investing 
um, uh, in a semiconductor plant in India. Uh, so we've definitely seen an increase in their economic and trade uh, and investment linkages. Um, so that is beginning to change. Um, but in terms of broader ma maritime security, um, I think we should look at things um, like the, the Quad Initiative for Maritime Domain Awareness. This was the initiative that was announced uh, following the Quad Summit in Tokyo last May. And this is aimed at um, allowing the Indo-Pacific nations to develop a common operating picture of what's happening uh, in their own uh, territorial waters, uh, EEZs, so that they can protect their own sovereignty. So this is a very important initiative. India is obviously a very important part of that uh, initiative. And of course, India has a, an information fusion, fusion center uh, in New Delhi that uh, contributes to this idea of building maritime domain awareness among the Indo-Pacific nations. Um, so very much has a role to play there. And we can also point to the annual Malabar naval exercises, which have involved India, the US, and Japan uh, in recent years. And uh, more recently, Australia has been invited. Now, for many years, Australia was not part of the Malabar naval exercises, and I think India um, had refrained from inviting Australia um, in deference to China and, and to not uh, provoke uh, China. However, after the 2020 India-China border crisis, um, which resulted from China's military buildup along their disputed borders, and in fact led to a clash between the two countries that resulted in the first uh, loss of life on the India-China border since 1975. After that happened, then India did invite Australia to the Malabar naval exercises, and now Australia uh, is regularly joining these exercises. And in fact, um, it's just been announced that the next Malabar naval exercise will happen off the coast of Australia for the first time in August. Uh, so I think we see that India uh, has a very important role to play in broader maritime security issues in the Indo-Pacific region and is starting to uh, build relations with Taiwan um, and will be uh, more willing to you know, stand up for Taiwan and against any uh, military coercion or intimidation of Taiwan because India faces this kind of uh, intimidation itself at its own borders. So I think this is motivating India to want to do and say more about uh, the challenges that Taiwan is facing. Mr. Lai, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, first of all, I just second what the, uh, Lisa just said, that uh, yes, the India-Taiwan, especially economic relation in the recent several years, uh, progressed tremendously. And uh, India courted the FOSCOM, the investment for the electronic vehicle, uh, in addition to the semiconductor plant. Uh, so that things are moving, and uh, India also started to break uh, some of the taboo, although we just hope that it can break faster, uh, go deeper. But uh, India has its own uh, very unique pace due to its own very unique uh, consideration. Uh, going back to the issues about the East China Sea and South China Sea regarding the Chinese Great Zone operation, I think first of all, we, uh, all the country, including the South Korea, uh, the Korea, Japan, Taiwan, uh, Philippines, and the Southeast Asia country that experience, including Vietnam, experience uh, the Chinese Great Zone operation country, we should uh, um, establish establish a um, uh, consultation mechanism to compare notes about what we experience about the from Chinese. Um, 
grid zone operations. It is important to know that um, uh, we need to compare even to the detail about uh, what kind of asset they are sending, uh, even to the, the number, a serial number, and the personnel they are, they are there, in order to know the uh, deployment pattern as well as uh, when they are sending this uh, asset to one region, uh, would the same asset will also send to other region at different time. Uh, because that will help us to understand uh, the way that China is operating those the uh, gray zone operation as well as the resource limitations about what they can actually do. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first thing. And second thing is that um, the uh, uh, when we talk about the uh, the gray zone operation, there's also the need for uh, those countries uh, experience a similar uh, concern by China. Uh, need to come out together and exercise with the eye about how to uh, correspond uh, to those gray zone operations. What China did uh, to uh, just like what they did to the South, uh, in the South China Sea toward the Southeast Asian countries uh, is that China wanted to do that bilaterally. So that can focus all their national resources into one single country and force them and wear them down and uh, uh, also wear them uh, down in, in terms of their resources and force them to accept the Chinese objective. So that if we are able to uh, at least come together uh, and uh, to discuss among ourselves about the collective way to deal with. Uh, sometimes the collective way of deal with, not necessarily in terms of the military or the kinetic, but also in terms of political as well as economic. How to deal with the, uh, the Chinese gray zone operation. Those are the things that uh, that is needed. Because we need to let Chinese know that uh, they cannot just uh, bully one by one uh, and uh, 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 separate all of us and then we all go down. And they have to face uh, the country they started to work together and uh, they were going to face a group of country rather than just single one country. That's my view. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Professor Take, about the gray zone. Well, from my side, with regards to East China Sea and South China Sea and uh, China trying to change the status quo, uh, there is the China Coast Guard and the maritime militia. And so what about this concern and this response? I'd like to think about that. Now, the China Coast Guard vessels are becoming bigger and their activities are increasing, that's a fact. And in recent years, uh, the vessels, uh, they are speeding up, um, increasing the size. And according to Japanese Coast Guard data, it's about uh, three times uh, in terms of 1,000 ton vessels that can go to the high seas, it's three times. And uh, that's already two times in terms of Japanese Coast Guard vessels. And they are right now reinforcing uh, the vessels on side of the Japanese Coast Guard too. And in terms of the heavy arming, according to DOD report last year and also domestic reports, there are 20 or so Corvette uh, missiles. Uh, they've left 76 millimeter guns and they have now been uh, rehabilitated so that the Chinese Coast Guard can use them. So you have this larger size and uh, more more arms, and uh, the means used by the China Coast Guard and the maritime militia are diversifying and escalating. And oftentimes, uh, these uh, vessels, vis-a-vis -vis the fishing vessels of Vietnam and Philippines, they become uh, coercive and have uh, violent harassment. In other words, they spray a lot of water to inundate them, or the smokestack is uh, inundated so that it breaks down, or maybe there is uh, a maneuver vessels and slamming uh, their vessels to the other vessels and uh, seizing uh, fishing tools. So if the vessel is bigger, this uh, becomes more effective and it is uh, uh, in a skirmish uh, an advantage in dealing with the foreign uh, maritime law enforcement agencies. So taking up arms along with these water cannons, it could be the case that uh, opportunities could be made to change the status quo. Now, in the South China Sea, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the maritime governance suite countries, the Chinese Coast Guard and also the maritime militia are changing the status quo. However, in the East China Sea, we don't see too many of such incidents. 
And uh, according uh, to the uh, uh, research uh, uh, institute, uh, the gray zone options are being weakened. In other words, uh, where the governance is weak, uh, the status quo is being changed. And so in the gray zone of China, in order to deal with this uh, change of the status quo, we need to support those countries with weak governance. And also, uh, there needs to be the reinforcement of cyber resilience, in other words, global information uh, sharing, and also with IMO and and uh, private enterprises, that can be the uh, cooperative uh, action, and uh, that would uh, be a means to deter uh, the actions in the gray zone. Thank you very much. So, uh, with regards to the Taiwan Strait, we've been talking about the Indo-Pacific uh, security issues, and in the well time remaining, which is limited, uh, we would like to take up uh, some questions from the floor. And uh, because of time limitations, uh, I'm going to maybe uh, ask a, a couple of questions together. That is Japan and the United States with regards to one China policy being maintained. Uh, the U.S. side has uh, the strategic uh, uh, vagueness. and. Uh, not strategic vagueness, but uh, some people say maybe the American commitment should be made clearer. And on this point, Japan, U.S., Taiwan perspective with regards to the defense of Taiwan, um, perhaps there should be a clearer commitment by the surrounding nations. So I'd like to ask you to answer this question just one minute and uh, reasons for your view. So Curtis San, please. Look, I think there are very good reasons for the U.S. policy of strategic ambiguity uh, when it comes to Taiwan. So I, I don't think there's any push in the United States uh, to change that. And in fact, um, there have been a lot of questions raised uh, because, of course, um, President Biden has mentioned on a few occasions um, he's been very, very clear about the U.S. Um, defending Taiwan. So I think, you know, it, it's clear that the U.S., um, you know, would defend Taiwan. Um, but at the same time, I think this, um, this policy of ambiguity um, has served an important purpose. And there's really no reason to, you know, officially change that policy. Um, I think that... Um, you know, to the extent that President Biden uh, has been more clear uh, on that, uh, there there must have uh, been a particular need uh, for for um, being more direct um, on that uh, issue. But I think, in general, the U.S. would not like to to change that policy of strategic ambiguity. And uh, the hope is that um, there is no need to, to clarify that, that we don't see the military intimidation and um, coercion um, of the kind that we saw last summer. Well, uh, Professor Take, between Japan and Taiwan, the, there are political constraints, and that says it all, but uh, militarily speaking, uh, Japan and Taiwan becoming uh, like Ukraine and Poland, well, I would think that uh, these are close uh, democracies, and uh, Taiwan is a close country to Japan, and vice versa. That is, uh, well, is Japan going to be Poland or Ukraine, and is Taiwan going to be Ukraine and Poland? I don't know. but. Uh, Japan and Taiwan militarily deepening uh, the ties, I think, is uh, necessary. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Lai, from the perspective of Taiwan, please. Yeah, thank you. I think the uh, from Taiwan, of course, uh, we just hope that the uh, uh, 
The commitment will be made clear uh, as a way of deterrence against the Chinese possible invasion. Uh, that will be very helpful. Um, of course, we also understand that uh, the argument about the sustaining the, uh, uh, not to discard the uh, strategic ambiguity altogether. So the issue is basically about how to dissuade China from attacking Taiwan uh, through the uh, public statement and the commitment, and also the real cooperation between Japan, US, and Taiwan, so we can uh, work together. And another thing I like to mention is that uh, uh, because right now the ambiguity, uh, people talk about maintaining ambiguity is about to not to let Chinese to the excuse of the uh, escalating the tension or the uh, start the war uh, and probably against Taiwan. But I think another issue about the ambiguity is that how that uh, will lead to the other friendly nations uh, has a concern about the Taiwan Strait. Would that lead to their ambiguity regarding their stance and the expectation as well? So that is right now the, the people really need to uh, ponder hard about this, how the ambiguity will also affect uh, the friendly nations, not just about uh, what Chinese perception. That is another strategic concern that we need to be aware of. Thank you. Thank you. And now over uh, the, uh, well, centering around the uh, Taiwan Strait issues, uh, what uh, the three countries need to do? Well, in Philippines, India, Australia, these are regional nations. What sort of cooperation can happen? Uh, well, uh, we discussed around these issues. And uh, well, uh, from the perspectives of the US, uh, Japan, and uh, Taiwan, I thank the uh, participants very much. So with this, I'd like to conclude this session. Now, part two follow about the uh, the impact of the Ukrainian war uh, will uh, resume at uh, 3 p.m. Thank you for your participation.